Hello, Tracy here with another scrapbooking process video. Today I'm making another page from the Hip Kit Club uh, kit from May of 2021. And I'm making a page to go along with these other wedding layouts that I have in that album, in my album already. Uh, the most recent one here, Better Together. These are both on my channel, Mrs. and Mr. and also Better Together. So check those out if you're interested in seeing them and you miss them. Uh, but I want something that's going to have a similar color scheme and vibe to those, but it doesn't have to exactly match. Now I'm using the same kit that I used for the Better Together uh, layout, and I'm going to be scrapbooking this picture of the groom and his sister. I'm also going to be using a sketch from Creative Scrappers, which I have the website on the screen there, and I'll also link it in the information section below, but I love Christine's sketches, and I'm using sketch number 13 from Just Sketches. If you do check out her website and purchase any of her uh, sketchbooks, make sure to use the code MercyTiara15 for a discount on your book. Uh, so I have the pages here, the papers here from the kit. I've put the embellishments aside because I'm kind of not sure if I'm going to use them. I put them aside for now. And I'm just looking through this paper and I'm putting aside anything that I know isn't going to work for this page. Um, I'm thinking this rainbowy type of uh, paper will work really well and I'm not sure about this one because I think that those butterflies are just a little bit too competing with her dress. I like this paper here because it picks up on some of the papers in that rainbow uh, paper that I want to use and also in some of the other pages about this wedding in my album. This piece here, I like how bold it is. It's, it's from Amy Tangerine. These journaling pieces on the other side though I'm not going to be able to use because I'm actually not doing any journaling about this one. I actually don't know the sister of the bra of the of the groom very well. And so the the main message here is look at this awesome photo of Adam and his sister. So I don't really need to do any journaling about that. Now back on January 8th when I was doing the layout uh for Better Together, I gessoed using golden regular just gesso. Um I gessoed four pieces of regular white cardstock. This is basil cardstock and uh, I am drawing from that small collection of gessoed cardstock for today's layout. Now it is very important that you use gessoed cardstock for this kind of, of a mixed media project that I'm about to do. I'm going to use gelatos again and I'm going to apply them to the paper in a different way than I did last time. So uh, make sure you check out the last video because it does show uh, another way to use gesso on, on your page. There are lots and lots of ways to use gesso but these are just two of them. So I just popped that sketch up in the corner of the screen so that you can follow along and see what's guiding me. Uh, this is one of those rare occasions. Usually I use a sketch as a jumping off point and then I almost always veer quite severely off course from the sketch. But in this case, I'm actually going to almost exactly replicate that sketch. So um, it's a bit of a no brainer, but that's that allows me frees me up to have some fun playing with mixed media. And there are certain parts of this page that did not exactly go as planned. So it, it was nice to, when it came to embellishing to just follow the sketch quite exactly. So I am I haven't use mixed media in quite some time other than the last page that I did. So I'm just playing around. I have a couple of those pieces of pre gessoed cardstock down uh, it, it just in case I need to use another one. So as you can see um, applying the the gesso or not the gesso applying the gelato directly to the page it really does give you a more vivid look than what I got in my last page and then I'm using the packaging technique almost in a reverse way so instead of adding pigment to the page using the packaging I'm actually suctioning off some of the excess pigment using the um, the packaging now it I wasn't really being very careful because I knew I had backup pages. So I ended up getting the blue all over the edges of the page that I didn't want to get it. I want it to stay mostly over here in this shape that I'm building. I basically just want it to be, I want it to look like it's sort of coming out from behind my layers and my photos. And so you can see by the sketch right there that I, I'm just kind of like applying this, this color right where I think that my layers are going to go so that it'll show around the edges. And now I had plenty of 
pigment left on my packaging so I just added a bit more water and tapped my paintbrush to get a, a really splattered look. I'm going to dab some of those splatters with my paper towel and thanks to that gesso those little splatters of gelato did not soak into the paper and I can pick those up if I have too much and they it doesn't completely erase them but it makes them very very light. So I did dry that just so that I could not worry about it moving around on my page too much. And oops, look at what happened there. I didn't clean my brush enough. And so when I added the yellow, it actually turned green. So I'm gonna do a better job of cleaning out my brush. And I can tell it's clean when, it, when I dab it on my paper towel and it's clear. So here I'm keeping the yellow and the blue fairly separate here. And that's because I don't know exactly what parts of this are going to show and what parts are not going to show. And as you can see, once I layer it on top of the blue, it does turn green. And I don't want too much of that green showing. I'm drying it here and really none of this is good. None of that green in the center part is even going to show. But because I know it's going to be covered, it gives me an opportunity to experiment with how these gelatos are going to look when they're layered with one another. Now, as you can see, as I'm not really blending the two colors very much, I am going to go back and blend them because this, it looks too choppy, right? Like the, it, it, there's too much of a distinct line between where the yellow ends and the, and the blue starts. Uh, but it's a good start for me. I'm going to do some layering and I'm just doing the exact same thing, splattering a little bit more in the yellow this time. And then I also dabbed a bit of color up in the top corner there. As you can see from the sketch, there's a couple of embellishments up there and I'm going to put a few embellishments up there. So I'm just drying all of that so that I can work with this page. It does look like a very weird shape right now, uh, but it, it'll hopefully look better as time goes on <laughs> and it, once it gets covered up. And I will go in and I'll add a little bit of blending and overlap between the red, uh, not the red, <laughs> the yellow and the blue. Uh, but I'm just not doing it quite yet because I just want to see where everything is going to land before I decide to do that. I wanted to make this look a little bit drippy here and so I just used my brush to get it dripping because it had already dried too much to really move the way I wanted it to. And so if you didn't use gesso, what would happen when you added gelatos to your page is they would immediately start to soak into the page and you would not be able to move it around the way that I've been doing on this page. So I use an acrylic palette and it's by the company TriArt and uh, I just have some parchment paper attached to it to keep myself from splattering all over my computer and some of the other things on my desk. So that's what that was. Now that my mixed media is done for now, uh, I put that away and now I'm going to start pulling out some of these papers. Now this is from the Buenos Dias collection from American Crafts. It came in that kit. Actually, everything that I'm going, almost everything I'm going to use today came from that kit. This layout requires very little pattern paper. The mixed media kind of does most of the talking for this page. And uh, as I explained already, I don't really have much of a story to tell. So it's really all about the photo. Now what I'm doing here is I'm going to double map my photo first in white and then in navy blue. What this is going to do is give some nice bold straight lines and 90 degree corners that will offset and provide a little bit of balance to all of the more fluid parts of this layout. So the mixed media is quite fluid and uh, some of the pattern papers as well are, are pretty um, you know soft and curvy and so this gives me some nice strong bold corners and edges to just balance off that. It helps the photo to really stand out on the page too, as you can see. So I'm just deciding how much I want this, this piece of paper to protrude into the main, kind of like the background paper there. And so I went with that. I was gonna use my flag punch, but the paper is just a little bit too wide for that. So I just uh, folded the paper in half to get the center point cut a little slit and then cut from corner to the end of the slit and from the other corner to the end of the slit just to get a nice little banner flag there, a fishtail banner. 
And so I'm thinking about what am I going to use for that strip that's going across the edge. There's a, there's another strip there and I decided to use this navy blue patterned paper. It's from the Paige Evans collection. And I think that that does a good job of picking up not only in the blues in Robin's dress, but also it has that botanical floral print on it. Although you can only see little tiny bits of it, you can tell that it's a botanical. So it kind of fits with the wedding theme and with the fact that this wedding was outside and there's beautiful um, greenery in the background. There's not actually greenery, like it's not a floral on the dress. I'm not sure if you can tell the details of the dress. It's a gorgeous dress and it has constellations all over it. So I'm just messing around here with some scale as far as, you know, do I want chunky papers up there in the corner or skinny papers? I'm just playing around with it a little bit. I found myself a blue marker. This is from Desserts, which is the art store that we have here in Canada. It's called a twin tip marker and it's just this, the store brand marker. I just really, really love this color of blue. So I picked up this marker because I knew I didn't have a blue one. That was several years ago now. And basically I am doing this because I don't want any black on this layout. So instead of outlining in black, I'm outlining in this beautiful navy blue and it just ties the page together a little bit. It wouldn't be wrong to use black. I'm just kind of going with this blue theme and I want to I want to take it as far as I can take it. So I'm going to layer these little pieces up here like this and I'm just placing them in such a way that I'm not completely covering all of the mixed media blue that's up there. I want to make sure that a bit of that blue is showing. So I just layered those and scooched them down a little bit so they're not exactly on the top of the page. And the outlining just helps to set that that paper, especially that white background, the, the paper from Buenos Dias. It helps to kind of set that apart from the background. And now here's where, when, now that I have a sense of where the photos are going to lay, I definitely want to add a little bit more blending. And what happens with these gelatos is a couple of things. First of all, they are translucent so they're not completely opaque so you're go so when you put the yellow on top you're going to see the blue underneath but also because they're water based when you when you wet the blue from the yellow hitting it the blue is going to soften a little bit and reactivate and so there's also a, a blending that happens in the fluid as well so there's a both a layering and a blending that happens when I when I add water to this and extra extra yellow pigment. And so that looks kind of weird right now, but it's only going to peek through. So it doesn't my my main intent here was to just have some green peeking through so that it's clear. Well, even though this didn't happen, I wanted to look like the yellow and the blue mixed in a natural way to create some green. Instead, I just created it. Sorry about the bumpy camera there. I was pretty sure that I wanted to choose a title from these word stickers that I have in my stash. And so I just pulled my RASCOG over so that you could see the selection process. I'm basically looking for anything, even though these are black. What I noticed here is that word darling, I can change that A to a U and spell the surname of the groom. Is that not the coolest thing ever? When I saw it, I'd like literally gasped. I was like, oh, I can change this to Durling and this can be my title. So I am going to look through the rest of these titles. Although like really, how can you not make this Durling when I happen to have a sticker that says Darling right there? So we all knew that there was no way I could not use the title Durling. Now my problem here is that I've been going out of my way to make sure that there's no black on this layout and here I am the word Durling is black. So I'm thinking let's change these letter stickers. Um, because they're black I can't ink them. If they were white I could ink them or paint them or something like that. I guess I could paint them but I wanted to do something a little bit more mixed media e and break into some of my stash that I haven't used very much lately. So I pulled out my old th thickers and first I'm going to play around with how am I going to make this A into a U. It's actually pretty easy. I just want to make it look so that it fits. Look at that! 
It looks like it was meant to say Durling. Yay! But I'm going to put Durling's, right? So I just grabbed the S from the word cherish. I would never use the word cherish in a layout, so that's no, no concern there. It's just not how I speak, so um, this is... This is a reasonable sacrifice to make. So I'll just stick the little S on the end there. But for now, because I'm going to do some mixed media on this, I'm going to just stick it up higher on that backing. And I want to play around with what I could do. So I have two pair, two bottles of stickles that I think are a close match. One of them is, oh, what were they called again? Yeah, so one of them is called Starry Night and one of them is called Dark Blue. So Starry, this one is Dark Blue, the one by my thumb, and it has like dark blue and almost like a purpley color and some pinkish colored glitter mixed in there. Whereas the Starry Night has uh, mostly blue and maybe purple and definitely some silver in there. And the silver really makes the Starry Night one look a lot more sparkly and I really, really love the look of it. The only problem is that it's reading a little bit too purple. It's definitely blue when it's sitting on my shelf next to the purple stickles, but once I put it on this layout, it really has more of a purple look to it. So I grabbed my Nouveau Drops, my Nouveau Crystal Drops, which I actually don't have a whole lot of experience using these. I've used them a couple times and I've used them on letters in this exact way, um, but it's been a really long time. So I do have two shades of blue. Uh, the shades are Midnight Blue and uh, Navy Blue. Now, Midnight Blue is the first color that I did. It's a nice glossy um, uh, finish. And then this one is that I'm just putting on right now is navy blue and it is more of a pearlized finish and I don't care for it quite as much. It does look quite nice. It's just not the look that I'm going for. I feel like it's going to be too, like I like the solidness of the, uh, which was the color that I went with, <laughs> midnight blue. So I like the solidness of that. It's, an, it's a nice gloss and it doesn't have any kind of shimmer or sheen to it. So I'm just playing around with different camera angles here and I'm not actually going to continue with this one, but I'm just playing around. I've got some extra cameras laying around my room and so I have them hooked up and I'm going to use them every once in a while just to see, but it was clear to me that that camera actually doesn't have enough of, uh, like it was too blurry, it's not crisp enough. And so I went with my overhead camera instead. You can see it okay, I think, I hope. <laughs> Uh, so I'm just uh, doing this and I've done this before on chipboard not on foam but on chipboard letter stickers and it's a fun way to change a letter sticker around now the thing about it is that uh, these Nouveau drops I believe are designed specifically to have a smooth finish and so they will kind of smooth out as they dry um, but they're not really designed to use on a really big surface like what I'm doing. And so they're going to be bumpy and not bumpy, but they're going to be wavy and uh, like not flat, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, not flat in a smooth way though, if that makes any sense, you'll see. The other thing to keep in mind is that um, these will crack a little bit as they dry as well. And uh, you'll see later on that's going to cause a bit of a dilemma and I still don't even know if I handled that dilemma right, but, but we'll get to that when we come to it. So what I'm doing here is I am actually getting better as I go along, so I'm kind of getting the hang of it and getting myself familiar with how the, how the uh, substance flows from the bottle and, and so, so on. Uh, and what I'm finding really works for me anyways is to outline and then go back and fill in. And that allows me to get a nice smooth surface, especially on the edges. And then you can just kind of fill it in. And then you can go back with the nozzle, but without pressing on the nozzle. So you're not actually adding any product and, and smooth out any bumps and that sort of thing. And it actually came out pretty good. Like I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it, particularly at this phase. Later on, I'm going to mess it up and cause a couple of cracks and bumps. But uh, even then, I still think it looks pretty good. One thing that I would suggest that you do is before you do this, actually move the word off of the backing. And even if you just put it down again on the same backing, um, it, 
what I found later was that this was very hard to remove from the backing because it was the first time I was removing it from the backing. So um, I would suggest that you just pick it up and move it before you do this. Oh, also, I forgot to tell you the names of the gelatos I used. They were called blueberry and banana. Yum. So there's how the word Durling and the letter S look before they dry. And I'm just kind of playing around with where I might, where it might fit on the layout. I'm going to tidy up a little bit because there's a lot on my desk. So those foam black letter or word stickers were from the Amy Tangerine twins set. And uh, now I can kind of go back to composition while that word dries. So I just put my stickers back in my RASCOG and now I'm just kind of playing around with where is this going to fit and I want to make sure I'm leaving room for the S as well. But it looks like it's going to work the best probably right down here below everything. So I'm going to kind of fit everything as close to how it is right this very second as I possibly can. I'm going to pop up the photo on these foam dimensional adhesive from Stampin' Up! And then I'm also going to pop up this and then I realized this, these are big foam projects so let's use my big mama roll of 3M foam adhesive. <clears throat> So that will work well there. And then these letters are going to have a bit of a, there's going to be a little bit of a bump that they're going to have to go up on, but they're foam and I'm hoping that they'll stay flexible even with that on it. I'm using a, I'm using a T ruler here, which I almost never use, but I did want it to be straight. And with a mixed media, it can be hard. Sometimes those shapes can trick your eye. And I just wanted to make sure that it was straight. So I outlined that strip so that it matches with the other strip and I put a foam dot on the end so that it will kind of hold that space because it kind of hangs off the edge of the fishtail banner. And now this is going to hang off the edge as well. So I just put double adhesive on the top there so that it will all sit very flat and nice. <clears throat> there we go. So basically that is it for this layout and now I have this dilemma where it's starting to occur to me that if I try to peel this off when it's dry, it may very well crack. Now I don't have a whole lot of experience with Nubo Crystal Drops, but I have used them for this before and they did crack even without moving, the, the, the letters were chipboard, so they didn't flex like these ones do. So my fear was that if I tried to take this off after it dried, it would really crack up a lot and look really bad. So I decided to take it off even though <laughs> this product is not finished drying yet. So this is not necessarily advisable. And I'm guessing that if I had done what I said before, which is take it off and then put it back down someplace else on that backing, it probably would have popped off quite a bit easier. Another thing to do was I could have, if I had kind of predicted that I'd have this problem, I could have actually used a powder duster on the back of it and just removed the stickiness from the back of this word altogether. And then I could glue it down when it was dry, when I was ready. So I'm just using this Stampin' Up! tool. It's actually a little scraping tool for getting underneath of stickers. And I'm just using it to very gently stick the sticker down to the page without actually pressing on the face of the sticker because it's still wet. I'll add the eye right there. And I really like how this looks. I put my finger snack, snap dag in the middle. What am I trying to say? <laughs> I, I put my finger in the middle of the eye, of the dot in the eye. Anyways, <clears throat> smack dab in the middle, I think it's what I was trying to say. <laughs> oh boy. So now I'm thinking about embellishments and I can't stop thinking about stars, even though like 
I'm not, I, a part of me doesn't want to do stars just because it's stars on the, on the, on the sketch. And I don't necessarily want to copy it exactly. Uh, but her dress has constellations all over it. And like, how can I not put stars on this page? So I pulled out my Allie Edwards star scrapbooking kit, which I have in my stash and I haven't used this kit at all. And I pulled out this it's like a little piece of acetate and it's navy blue and it's a star and I thought it was perfect. Then I also picked out these pink fresh studio uh, star stickers. These are from a collection called The Mix. And I keep stars, star stickers in their own little place in my scrap room. They don't go in with my main stickers because stars and hearts are two things that I tend to reach for specifically. And so I do keep them together. Now I'm just taking some of these navy blue hearts off of the pink fresh uh, puffy stickers. <laughs> Look at me, I'm just putting them pretty much exactly or very close to where Christine put them in the sketch. So thank you, Christine. <laughs> I need to give a lot of credit to Christine for this layout because it's practically hers. <laughs> Now it was looking a little sparse. I mean, you know, it needs a little bit more than just exactly the things that are in the sketch. So I'm going to add these garden party resin stickers from Maggie Holmes. They're very thick and chunky and beautiful sparkly gold. And I think that they work amazingly on this page. They just add a little something, something that the page really needed. And so, now I went over to my stash and I'm going to actually grab my, oh, there's my little folder of star stickers if you were wondering about that. I do have a scrap room video coming up soon. Uh, here's how I store my sequins and I have a little sequins mix here. I have a couple of mixes. So this one is from Studio Calico and then this one is from Lucy's something or other. It's actually called Little Things from Lucy's Cards and this one is called Lucky Dip 4. Uh, and so it, I'm taking out the things that I want from each of these different little mixes as well as some of my own sequins. So I decided to make my own little sequins mix here. So I grabbed a little white container and I took the big blue ones out of that Studio Calico mix and then a, just a sprinkling of random ones from the uh, Lucky Dip little things from Lucy Cards, Lucy's Cards. And then I have a whole bunch of other sequins and I'm going to add these tiny, tiny, tiny little yellow uh, stars. And then I'm just, and I got those on eBay, all of my, all of my sequins that are not mixes that I bought from a company. They're all from eBay. You be prepared to have a lot of sequins if you buy individual packages of each color from, from eBay. I have sequins until the end of the world, I'm sure. So, uh, yeah, here's where this layout becomes incredibly tedious and I kind of don't know what I'm doing here. So um, I am using Stampin' Up! glue, which is super liquidy. It's this in this fine tip bottle, what it's called. I love this glue. It's fine tip glue pen and uh, I love this glue. But what I'm finding is that these two things are not working well together. So I'm using this this tool from Stampin' Up! It's like a, a pick, a picker upper tool, and it has a little bit of, of uh, putty in the end of it. But what I'm finding is that the glue, because the glue is so liquidy, the, the putty is too sticky. And so nothing is sticking to my page. So I decided to go with a glue that's a little bit stickier and that kind of like firms up pretty quickly. So I went with my Tombow Mono Multi Adhesive because I know that that gets tacky very, very quickly. I'm still having trouble like my the the end of my picker upper tool is way too sticky. So I keep sticking it onto paper towel to try to get maybe some fibers from the paper towel will take away from the stickiness of it. And it's just not, not working. And I, I can't help but feeling like maybe I could have done this with my fingers a little bit easier, which is what I did for the past 12 years of scrapbooking. I only, I only now got these tools. So, so anyhow, we will see. Maybe it's something that you just have to get used to. Uh, but 
<clears throat> the other thing is that because these sequins have holes in them, sometimes some of the glue is going through the hole and getting onto my pick tool, and then my pick tool is just as sticky as the glue is, so then it kind of goes back to the same problem again. Anyhow, sequins are just fiddly. So I know that this part of the process video is pretty tedious, but I do not delete it, almost any, unless if it's an accident, I don't take out any of my process. That's my kind of my, like my philosophy on process videos is that I show everything. I show my mistakes. I show tedious things. I show it all. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, this is how this process went. Now, one thing that I did here was I pulled out some of the tackiness, like some of that putty as it had glue accumulating on it, I just pull off the putty. <clears throat> and there's like um, an amount of putty inside of it, so you can just turn it and more putty will come out. I am still recovering from pneumonia, so my throat is a little scratchy, so I do apologize that my voice is probably all over the place today. But what I decided kind of worked in this situation is dab the glue, pick up the sequin, like pick up the sequin, dab the glue, put down the sequin, and then use my little pick tool to hold it down to the paper as I pulled away from, from the page. And that seems to work. That actually worked quite well. You saw me sprinkle those sequins and they landed just randomly around my page and I just left them all there exactly where they landed. with very few exceptions. What that does is it gives me a really nice random look. And I think that the randomness of all of the sequins, meaning all different sizes, all different colors, all different shapes, but they're all still within my main color scheme. So they're, they're all the dark blue, that bright turquoisey blue and yellow. Those are the only colors on this whole layout, really. Tiny, tiny bits of green and, and gold. Um, but, uh, I think that that gives the layout quite a bit more energy that, that I'm just shaking my page to see if any sequins are going to move around to make sure I got them all glued down, but I did. So I really do think that the sequins add quite a bit of energy. And I think that, you know, with the, with the boldness of that dress, I think that this page really needed something energetic that's going to, uh, kind of support the story of this really fun and it's almost like a casual but it's not like they look so relaxed and so themselves in that photo this photographer was really really great at bringing out people and, and helping them to relax for their photos so I just wanted to kind of capture that energy in the form of a layout so here are some video close-ups and there you get to see how that word really looks it's it's not quite a hundred percent dry at this point but it's it's close to dry and so you can see it, it's a little bit goopy and blobby but it's it's navy blue it's not black <laughs> that was my goal so here are the still photos of this page i'm really pleased with how it turned out i think it's fun and energetic and it's kind of what i wanted for this particular page and so I hope that you guys enjoyed watching my process. If you want to see more videos from me and make sure that you don't miss any, make sure that you subscribe. And if you want to get notifications, click the little bell. I would really, really appreciate that. It really makes my day when I get comments and uh, subscribers and that sort of thing. So thanks so much, everybody. Have a really great scrappy week.